Welcome to the Ultimate Sports Podcast. Today is Monday, October 7th, 2019. Today I'm going to recap the weekend's division series games and look ahead to today's games. NFL week number five, look ahead to the Monday Night Football game tonight. College football week six, go over those results. Hockey will go over everything from the weekend because it's the first weekend of the season. WNBA finals game number three, week seven for college football guest the lines and my best bet of the day okay we're gonna start with baseball and we're gonna start from friday in which all four series were being played and the houston astros came out on top in their game one against the rays by a score of 6-2 to two to take a one nothing series lead. Getting the win in that game was Justin Verlander, Tyler Glasnow, the loss. There was scoreless until the bottom of the fifth where Jose Altuve hit a home run, two-run shot to make it 2 nothing. And then there's a terrible error by Brandon Lau in which he dropped the ball, two runs scored on that to make it 4 nothing. And then bottom of the seventh, RBI double Jose Alvarez, or I'm sorry, uh, Jordan Alvarez, to make it 5 nothing, And then ground rule double by Yuli Gurriel to make it 6 nothing. Then top of the 8th, RBI single by Eric Sogard made it 6-1. And RBI double by Austin Meadows made it 6-2. And now is your final. Justin Verlander was awesome. Seven innings, one hit, no one runs to rock eight strikeouts. Then Ryan Presley came in for two-thirds of an inning. He wasn't good, really. Four hits, two and runs. Will Harris, a third of an inning, scoreless. And then Roberto Osuna came in for the ninth with two strikeouts. We all for the Rays. Tyler Glass now four and a third inning for two runs, two outs, five strikeouts. Brendan McKay, a third of an inning, two hits and a strikeout. Chaz Rowe, an inning and a third, a walk and a strikeout. Oliver Drake, an inning, two hits, two runs, a walk and two strikeouts. And Colin Pache, an inning, a hit, and a strikeout. The Braves defeated the Cardinals 3-0 in Game 2 to take a tie in the series. Winning pitcher was Mike Fulton. Average the loss. Jack Flaherty, Mark Melanson got the save. Bottom of the first, RBI single. Josh Saddleson made it 1-0 in the bottom of the second. Or, I'm sorry, the seventh. Adam Duvall, two-run shot, made it a 3-0 game. Mike Fulton. Average was awesome. 70 straight, no runs, no walks, seven strikeouts. Max Fried came in. An inning, a hit, and two strikeouts. And Mark Melanson, an inning, two hits, and two strikeouts. So he bounced back after what was a dreadful week one, or I'm sorry, game one performance. And then Jack Flaherty, seven innings, eight hits, three runs, and walk, and eight strikeouts. Tyler Webb, an inning, no hits, no runs, no walks, two strikeouts. Yankees over the Twins, 10-4 to, to take game one in a one nothing series lead. Getting the win was Tommy Canely in relief. Zach Little, the loss. Top of the first, home run by Jorge Polanco made it 1 nothing. Home run Nelson Cruz made it 2 nothing. in top of the third. Bottom of the third, RBI double Edwin Encarnacion made it 2-1. to one. And then a fielder's choice, which really should have been an error. Or did they give an error? Um, yes, they did give an error to C.J. Crone. Two runs scored on that error to make it a 3-2 lead for the Yankees. Top of the fifth, RBI single by uh, Jorge Polanco made it 3-3. Paxton got pulled. Bottom of the fifth, two-run double for Glaber Torres made it 5-3. Top of the sixth, home run Miguel Sano made it 5-4. Bottom of the sixth, home run DJ LeMayu made it 6-4. Home run Brett Gardner made it 7-4. And in the bottom of the seventh, bases clearing double DJ LeMayu 10-4. And that was pretty much... Your ball game. James Paxton in his playoff debut. Four and two-thirds innings. Five hits, three runs, a walk, and eight strikeouts. Adam Adovino uh, got a walk. Didn't even record an inning or a third of an inning. Tommy Canely, two-thirds of an inning, a hit, and a run, a walk, and a strikeout. Chad Green, two-thirds of an inning, scoreless. Zach Britton, an inning, a walk, and a strikeout. Jay Happ, an inning, a hit, a walk, and two strikeouts. Araldus Chapman, one inning, a walk, and a strikeout. Nationals over the Dodgers, 4-2, to, to tie this thing up at one apiece. 
getting the win with Steven Strasburg. Clayton Kershaw, the loss, Dakota Hudson, the save, or Daniel Hudson. Top of the first, RBI single, Howie Kendrick, 1-0. Top of the second, RBI single, Adam Eaton, 2-0. RBI double, Anthony Rendon, 3-0. Bottom of the sixth, sacrifice fight by Justin Turner made it 3-1. Bottom of the seventh, home run, Max Muncy made it 3-2. Top of the eighth, RBI single, as Durbel Cabrera made it 4-2. And that was your ball game. Steven Strasburg, 6 and 8 straight in a run, no walks, 10 strikeouts. Sean Doolittle, an inning, a hit, and a run, and two strikeouts. Steven, or I'm sorry, Max Scherzer, surprise appearance out of the bullpen in the eighth inning of that one, an inning and three strikeouts. And then Daniel Hudson closes out, an inning, a hit, two walks, and two strikeouts. Had a scare there in the ninth. Clayton Kershaw, six inning, six hits, three runs, a walk, and four strikeouts. Well, quality start for him, but people are going to pile on it because he was not good the first two innings. Pedro Baez, a third of an inning, two hits, no one runs, no walks, and a strikeout. Adam Korolek. A third of an inning, scoreless. Dustin May, an inning and a third, two hits and a run and a walk. Julio Urias, a scoreless inning as well. And then Saturday, the Yankees defeated the Twins 8-2 to to take a 2-0 series lead. Masahiro Tanaka got the win. And the rookie starter from the Minnesota Twins, Randy Dobnak, was charged with the loss. This was all Yankees again. Bottom of the first, RBI single. Edwin Encarnacion, 1 0. Bottom of the third, sacrifice by Giancarlo Stanton, 2 0. RBI single, Glaber Torres, 3 0. Grand Slam, DD Gregorius, 7 0. Yankees, probably the biggest hit of that series so far. RBI single, Brett Gardner, 8 0. Top of the fourth, Twins get on the board. RBI single by Mitch Garver made it 8 1. And then top of the ninth, RBI double by Luis Arez made it 8 2. Masahiro Tanaka continues his playoff success. Five innings, three hits, and a run to walk, seven strikeouts. Tommy Canely, an inning and two strikeouts. So a good bounce back from Canely from game one to game two. Adam Adovino, a a good bounce back from game one to game two, an inning, a hit, and a strikeout. Tyler Lyons, a scoreless inning with two strikeouts. And Jonathan Luizica, an inning, two hits, and a run, and two strikeouts in mop-up duty. So that game was a blowout. So I didn't go to uh, Britton and Chapman. So they're well-rested for game three. Astros over the race, 3-1. to one. The Astros are up 2-0. Garrett Cole, the win. Blake Snell, the loss. Will Harris, the save. Bottom of the fourth, home run, Alex Bregman, 1-0 Astros. Bottom of the seventh, RBI single, Martin Maldonado, 2-0. Bottom of the eighth, RBI single, Carlos Correa, 3-0. Top of the ninth, fielder's choice, Avisail Garcia made it 3-1. This game was very interesting late. The Rays had the winning run, I believe, on base, if I'm not mistaken, in this game. But Garrett Cole was incredible. Probably the best start anybody's had in the playoffs so far. Seven and two-thirds innings, four hits, no one runs, a walk, 15 strikeouts, 118 pitches. Roberto Osuna, not so good. Two-thirds of an inning, two hits, and a run, two walks, and a strikeout. Will Harris, two-thirds of an inning, and a strikeout to um, clean up the mess from Osuna. Yesterday, Braves over to Cardinals 3-1 to take a 2-1 series lead. This was a very dramatic game as... Sean Newcomb got the win. Carlos Martinez, the loss of the blown slave. And Mark Melanson gets the save. Bottom of the second, sacrifice fly. Matthew Carpenter, 1-0 Cardinals. Top of the ninth, RBI double. Dansby Swanson after intentionally walking. Brian McCann proved to be a mistake. 1-1. And then right after that, two-run single. Adam Duvall made it 3-1. And that was your final score. Adam Duvall's been money in this series. Big hit after big hit. Mike Soroka, seven innings, two hits in a run, no walks, seven strikeouts. Max Freed, a third of an inning and two walks. Darren O'Day, a third of an inning and a hit. Sean Newcomb, a third of an inning, scoreless or nothing. And then Mark Melanson in the ninth, an inning, a hit. No one runs, no walks, and a strikeout. And one of the, and that strikeout, by the way, was a bad strike three call on uh, Marcelo Zuna, who was trying to get on base to start a little rally for... 
the Cardinals. Right? I should say they continue to rally because they did get the uh, runner on base. I think it was Paul Goldschmidt that had a double in the ninth inning to get almost in as the tying run. So that's 2-1 in favor of the Braves. And the Dodgers, with a 10-4 win over the Nationals, take a 2-1 series lead. And Hagen Ryu, the win. Patrick Corbin came out of the bullpen this game. He was charged with the loss. Bottom of the first, home run Juan Soto, 2 nothing Nats. Top of the fifth, home run Max Monty made it 2-1. Top of the sixth, two-run double Russell Martin off of Patrick Corbin made it 3-2. Two-run double Kike Hernandez, 5-2. Three run home run or uh, Justin Turner eight two, bottom of the sixth, wild pitch by Joe Kelly scores in Anthony Rendon to make it eight three. Double play as Thurbo Cabrera run scores makes it eight four, top of the ninth Russell Martin home run, two run shot ten four Dodgers was your final. So Russell Martin turning back the clock in this game. Hagen Ryu five innings for two runs two walks three strikeouts. Joe Kelly didn't record an out, a hit. Two in runs and three walks. He sucked. Julio Urias, two scoreless innings. Gave up a hit. Adam Corla, a third of an inning and a strikeout. Kenton Miander, two thirds of an inning. Kenley Jansen, an inning and two strikeouts. So Kenley Jansen looked like the Kenley Jansen of old. Anibal Sanchez, five innings, four hits and a run, two walks, nine strikeouts. Patrick Corbin, two thirds of an inning, four hits, six in runs, two walks, two strikeouts. Wander Suero, a third of an inning, two hits and a run. Fernando Rodney, an inning, a hit, two walks, two strikeouts. Following Rodney was Tanner Rainey, an inning, and a hit. Hunter Strickland, an inning, two hits, two runs, a walk, and two strikeouts. He's been terrible in this series. Today, in about 20 minutes from now, you have the Astros in the race for Game 3, race facing elimination at home. You have Zach Greinke going for Houston and Charlie Morton going today for the Rays. I think the Rays survive and force a game four. Morton's been their best pitcher all year. He was okay in the wild card game, did enough to help the Rays in that game. But I don't know if I trust Granke in a big spot. He's coming up short a lot for the Dodgers when he was on the Dodgers and pitched poorly against the Dodgers when he was with the Diamondbacks. So he has a shaky playoff history since he uh, signed that Dodgers contract. So give me the Rays... In a low-scoring game, like a 3-1 to one type of game to uh, keep their season alive. 3 o'clock TBS, Braves Cardinals, Brian Anderson and Ron Darling on the call, by the way. Bob Costas, John Smaltz, or it might be Jim Cott. Yeah, it's Jim Cott, John Smaltz is on the Yankee series. So, Jim Cott, Bob Costas, Tom Verducci on the call for Astros Rays. On MLB Network. So back to the Braves Cardinals. Cardinals sending out uh, Miles Mikolas. Or I'm sorry, Dakota Hudson. I thought it was Mikolas. And then uh, Dallas Keuchel going for Atlanta. Will the Braves clinch or the Cardinals force a decisive game five? I'm going to say the latter. I like the Cardinals at home. I like Hudson. Dallas Keuchel on the road scares me a little bit. And I think that Paul Goldschmidt and Paul DeYoung, Marcelo Zuno, all those guys will step up. Yadier Molina will all step up and uh, deliver at home to uh, save their season and bounce back from that dreadful Game 3 loss. So give me the Cardinals to um, force a Game 5 back in Atlanta on Wednesday night. At 6.40 on TBS, you have the Dodgers. Against the Nationals, Rich Hill against Max Scherzer. Nationals are right to send out Max Scherzer. You have to have your best guy of the season on the line. Rich Hill is going for the Dodgers, so that's a little interesting that they go that route. He's somebody that's been hurt a lot and somebody that um, has some good history in playoff games with the Dodgers. I know he did well in the World Series. I believe that was against the Astros. I've seen him perform in types of spots like this. I just said, um, I saw a stat, 2.36 ERA in how many ever uh, postseason starts with the Dodgers. So that's pretty good. So I was right about his history in the playoffs in a Dodgers uniform. 
I chose the Dodgers in four, and guess what? I'm going to stick with it. I think Scherzer will pitch well, but my problem is the Nationals bullpen. Hunter Strickland, Sean Doolittle, I don't trust any of those guys. Wouldn't rule out Strasburg out of the bullpen, but I don't think they're going to do that because in case they win and force a game five, then they'll probably go the Strasburg route for game five because they started Anibal Sanchez yesterday. Patrick Corbin came out of the bullpen yesterday. So I think they won't use Strasburg. I think the bullpen blows it. I think it's going to be dramatic, similar to the Braves-Cardinals game from yesterday. So give me the Dodgers to uh, come out with a big win. And, hey, I'm going to make a prediction here. I think you can possibly see Walker Buehler or Clayton Kershaw out of the bullpen in this game. Very reminiscent of 2016. I remember that Kenley Jansen pitched the eighth inning and Clayton Kershaw come in and close out the Nationals back in 2016 to advance to the ALCS. And I think I had the Dodgers winning that series as well, obviously. So give me the Dodgers to close out the Nationals tonight. And last but not least, the Yankees at the Twins, 840 on Fox Sports 1. Luis Severino against, I believe it's Jake Odorizzi going for Minnesota. And it is. Um, I'm going to take the Twins here to force a game four. They're the biggest underdog, surprisingly, of the four dogs because they're home. But I can see why, and it's because of their starting pitching that they're such a huge underdog compared to the Dodgers, the Braves, and the Rays. And the only favorite I'm obviously taking tonight to win is the Cardinals. I think the Twins force a game four. I don't trust Luis Severino coming off the injury in a road playoff game. I could see a scenario where he's only in there for like two or three innings and gives up four runs and strikes out some guys too, but I don't see a world where he's in there very long and then they'll go Jay Hat for a couple innings. Maybe he implodes a little bit and then they go to their bullpen. What's in favor of the Yankees is that their bullpen is ready to go because they had the off day yesterday and Britton and Chapman had two days rest. So that's in the Yankees' favor. The cold weather, I think, hurts both offenses. But it comes down to who has the better pitching, and that's the Yankees on paper. But I just have a gut feeling that the Twins force a game four. I was going to actually predict the Yankees sweep for this series, but I was talked out of it a little bit and kind of um, convinced out of it when Josh Hader blew that save last week in the wild card game that it kind of dawned on me. I could see a Yankee reliever blowing a game in Minnesota, so I'm going to say Yankees in four instead of Yankees sweep. Won't be surprised if the Yankees close out tonight. And the same goes for the Astros. And same, quite frankly, goes to Atlanta if um, Keuchel steps up. So give me the Twins at home to force a game four. I don't feel good about this Twins pick at all because they've been the least competitive team in the division series so far. Even Tampa Bay's been more competitive than them. And that's courtesy of Tampa Bay's pitching. I knew that the Twins starting pitching or any of their pitching was not very good and it would be a good matchup for the Yankees. But I just thought and kind of still think that that crowd tonight is going to be ruckus in Minnesota. It's going to be their first home playoff game since 2010 in Target Field. But we'll see here. So give me the Twins. I think it's like a... Yankees offense keeps them in the game, but ultimately their bullpen just doesn't have it tonight. So let's say like 8-7 Minnesota as a final score. Maybe it's a walk-off home run that wins it for many to keep their season alive for at least another day. All right, NFL week number five. Vikings over the Giants, 28-10. Predictable because... What do the Vikings do? Beat bad teams. What does Kirk Cousins do? Beat bad teams. And what else do they do? Lose in prime time and lose against good teams. The Giants are a bad team, so that result doesn't surprise me. The best unit on that field was the Vikings defense, as predicted. Cardinals over to Bengals 26-23, so Kyler Murray gets his first win. So does uh, Cliff Kingsbury. Um, Best unit on the field in that game was the Cardinals offense. And Cincinnati remains winless. Next up for Arizona's home against the Falcons. Next up for Cincinnati's at Baltimore. And by the way, for Vikings-Giants purposes, Minnesota's next game's home against the Eagles. 
and the Giants. This is just a rude, another rude awakening coming for Daniel Jones at Foxborough against the best team, best defense in the NFL. So, um, good luck, Daniel Jones. Bills over the Titans, 14-7. to Buffalo, good performance on defense. Josh Allen was there. Their offense really isn't that great, but their defense is uh, spectacular. Next up for Buffalo, I believe they're on a bye. And I think the Titans may also be on a bye as well. I think there's six bye teams this week compared to four last week. No, the Titans are actually at Denver, and Buffalo, I was right, is indeed on a bye. Raiders over the Bears 24-21 in London. The Raiders are the biggest surprise in the league right now. They're 3-2. and two. The Bears are a disappointing 3-2. and two. Yes, they're without their quarterback right now. And... Yeah, that's what the excuse is going to be for why they lost this game. But they're down 17 nothing and came back and took the lead at one point. Let's not forget that. And then uh, Gruden fakes a punt, and that changed the game. So I have to give credit to John Gruden for really changing the uh, result of that game on his own. And Raiders offense looking competent. So maybe they are a surprise team in the AFC this year. Who knows? And both of these teams are on a bye next week because of London, obviously. The Buccaneers fall short at the Saints, 34-24. I'm sorry, 31-24. New Orleans, good performance, best performance in a Saints uniform for Teddy Bridgewater. Um, Jameis Winston, I guess, was okay. It's just that their defense couldn't stop the Saints' offense. Next up for the Bucks, they're in London against the Panthers. Next up for the Saints, they're at the Jaguars and Gardner Minshew. The Eagles defeated the Jets 31-6. An impressive win for Philly. And yet again, the Jets are just incompetent. My God. They need Sam Darnold back. And it won't get any easier for the Jets. They're playing against the Cowboy team, who I think has so much bounce-back potential next Sunday. And then the Eagles or at the Vikings. Ravens over to Steelers, 26-23 in overtime. The Steelers should have won this game, but what cost them the game was the stupid referees calling the uh, roughing the passer, and obviously the injury or the concussion to Mason Rudolph is another reason why the Steelers lost this game. But anyway, Ravens took advantage of two things and uh, improved the 3-2 and two in the year. Pittsburgh drops to 1-4. and four. Baltimore next up for them. They're on a bye. Actually, no. It is kind of a bye game for them. They're hosting the Bengals. Why do I think they're on a bye? But anyway, it's a bye game because it's a game that they should win. They're going to be a double-digit favorite in that game. And then the Steelers are at the Chargers on Sunday Night Football next week. The Patriots defeat the Redskins 33-7. And then the Redskins made a coaching change, which we'll get to in... A couple of minutes. Who face the Dolphins next week in Miami. Patriots host the Giants on Thursday Night Football. And the Pats defense continues to um, show that it's their best unit. The Panthers defeat the Jaguars 34-27. An impressive win for Carolina. And Kyle Allen. Now you can start talking me into the Ewing theory for Cam Newton. And even the Ewing theory for Nick Foles for two different teams. The Eagles and the Jaguars. So that's very interesting. The Panthers next are in London against the Buccaneers. And the Jaguars next are hosting the Saints. So that's a really good game in Jacksonville. Texans host or beat the Falcons 53-32. Very impressive win for Texans. Although they gave up a lot of points, most of them in garbage time. Dan Quinn has to be on the short list of next coach to be fired after uh, Jay Gruden. Houston is at the Chiefs next week. And the Falcons are at the Cardinals. Broncos defeat the Chargers 20-13 for their first win of the season. Congratulations to Vic Fangio on his first NFL win. The Broncos next week host the Titans. And the Chargers host the Steelers on Sunday Night Football. 
Packers over the Cowboys, 34-24. Aaron Rodgers was spectacular in this game. The Cowboys just got into too big of a hole to come back from in this game. Dak Prescott had three picks. He did not look good at all. So his price tag is obviously dropped. Packers next week host the Lions on Monday Night Football. And the Cowboys are at the Jets in the late afternoon window. The Jim Nance, Tony Romo special, it looks like. And possibly the return of Sam Darnold, too. The Colts defeat the Chiefs 19-13 on Sunday Night Football. This was an absolute stunner in my mind. I thought that this was going to be a blowout. And I really was mad at the Colts last week for losing to the Raiders. But it turns out that the Colts just had a bad game against the Raiders, who might actually be, guess what, a good team, perhaps. And the Chiefs, I think the reason why they lost this game is that Patrick Mahomes clearly is not right. He was limping around all game long. If He he looked like himself early on in this game, and it looked like it was going to be a shootout. But I have to give credit to the Chiefs' defense for somewhat keeping them in this game. And I think that's a replica of... Um, Jacoby Brissett not being so special. Although, I give the Colts a lot of credit for doing a lot of running the ball, which has helped Brissett and doesn't have to make Brissett make plays. So they give it off to Marlon Mack and Nigel Hines and I forget who the third running back they have is. But that was a really impressive win for the Colts who have their bye coming up. And then the Chiefs host the Texans. Tonight we have the Browns at the 49ers, 8-15 ESPN, Joe Tessator, and Booger McFarlane on the call at least the Salters. Should be a fun game. Cleveland is a team that um, is coming off that good win in Baltimore against the Ravens. And then uh, the Niners are a team that is coming off their bye, so they could be a little rusty. And I buy the whole rusty off a buy theory. And that's part of the reason why I like the Cleveland Browns. And I just think the 49ers are fraudulent. So give me the Cleveland Browns getting five points. And I think the Browns win the game on the field too. And they're 2-1 to one on the money line. So give me the Browns to win the game on the field. Plus five as the play for the um, ATS side total thing I have. Next up, college football. Going to go through those results. Boy, there are a couple interesting results. Some upsets. Some close calls. We'll start with Friday night. In which there are a few surprising results. In my mind, Cincinnati over number 18 UCF. 27-24. That was not a surprise to me. I thought UCF would win. But I wouldn't have been surprised if Cincinnati pulled it out, though. So what a great win for Luke Fickle and Cincinnati, who are now 4-1 and on the year, and UCF is 4-2. and San Jose State over New Mexico, 32-21. San Jose State is now... 3-2 and two on the year. New Mexico is 2-3. and three. So, it looks like that San Jose State might not be the worst team in that conference, which is a stunner to me. Number 5, LSU over Utah State, 42-6. Number 6, Oklahoma over Kansas, 45-20. Number 8, Wisconsin over Kansas State, 48-0. Number 12, Penn State over Purdue, 35-7. Number 19, Michigan over number 14, Iowa, 10-3. Takeaways from those games, LSU continues to really put their gas on the pedal and not really um, be a team that looks like they're peeking ahead. So I think Ed Orgeron has to be in the conversation for National Coach of the Year so far. Oklahoma doing Oklahoma things. Wisconsin doing Wisconsin things. If you got... This Penn State Purdue number at exactly 28, you pushed. And then a defensive battle in the Big Ten with Iowa and Michigan, with Michigan coming out on top and getting a nice win, although their offense obviously um, is not very sharp. 
Texas Tech upsets number 21, Oklahoma State 35-45. An impressive win for Texas Tech. And their new coach, Matt Wells, that's their signature win. And that might be a team that could surprise in the Big 12. USF over UConn, 48-22. Predictable. Maryland over Rutgers, 48-7. Predictable. Tulane over Army, 42-33. Good win for Tulane. Louisville over Boston College, 41-39. Boston College covers, but Louisville survives. Iowa State over TCU, 49-24. Good job by me. That was one of my best five pleas. Central Michigan over Eastern Michigan, 42-16. So Central Michigan may not be bad. Number 10, Florida over number 7, Auburn, 24-13. Florida's defense is very good, and Auburn may have been exposed. Number 9, Notre Dame over Bowling Green, 52-0. Good job by Notre Dame, not looking ahead. Number 11, Texas over West Virginia, 42-31. Depending on what number you got, you either got West Virginia to cover or Texas to cover. It went from 11.5 to 11 to 10.5 to 10. If you got it at 11.5, like me with West Virginia, then you covered. Ohio over Buffalo, 21-20 in overtime. Buffalo covers, but Ohio wins. Toledo over Western Michigan, 34-24. Or 31-24. Now was a game, obviously, that... Uh, Toledo was um, favored in, but a lot of people liked Western in that spot. Georgia State over Arkansas State, 52-38. That was a bad pick by me going with Arkansas State. Ball State over Northern Illinois, 27-20. And by the way, the Georgia State-Arkansas State was part of the best five. Ball State upsets Northern Illinois. That's a surprise. Virginia Tech as a 14-point underdog upset Miami, 42-35. Funny thing is that Virginia Tech was up 35-14 to in that game, and Miami came back. And they had the had chance to take the lead, but they didn't because they missed the extra point. And then Virginia Tech took advantage of that and got away with the win. Navy over Air Force, 34-25. That was a closer game than the final score indicated because Navy scored on the last play of the game, which ended up being a turnover. Middle Tennessee over Marshall, 24-13. Got that upset pick right. Baylor over Kansas State, 31-12. Minnesota over Illinois, 40-17. I had over 57 as one of my best five plays. That was a push. Memphis over Yale Monroe, 52-33. Mizzou over Troy, 42-10. Nebraska over Northwestern, 13-10. North Carolina over Georgia Tech, 38-22. Arizona over Colorado, 35-30. Yet again, Colorado can't come up at home as a short favorite. Western Kentucky over Old Dominion, 20-3. Number 3, Georgia over Tennessee, 43-14. UAB over Rice, 35-20. FIU over UMass, 44-0. Number 4, Ohio State over number 25, Michigan State, 34-10. I did not get the cover. If Michigan State backdoored, I would have won. Number 24, SMU over... Tulsa, 43-37 in triple overtime. Tulsa was up like 28-3 in that game, and SMU came back and forced overtime. But um, Tulsa covers, and SMU ends up winning the game. Ole Miss over Vanderbilt, 31-6. That's one that I kind of called on the podcast. Number 13, Oregon. Over Cal, 17-7. I thought Cal was undervalued against the spread, and I was proven right. Pitt over Duke, 33-30. Pitt was up big in that game. Duke came back, but Pitt ultimately won. UTSA over Utah, 26-16. Liberty over New Mexico State, 20-13. Oregon State over UCLA, 48-31. That's a pretty big upset. San Diego State over Colorado State, 24-10. Stanford over number 15, Washington, 23-13. So there's your uh, top 15 team that lost outright as a double-digit favorite on the first week of October. That happens every single year. Some people thought it'd be this game, and others thought it'd be West Virginia, but it ended up being this one. Number 16, Boise State over UNLV, 38-13. And those are your results from the weekend. Guess the lines will be coming shortly. WNBA Finals, game number three. The Mystics come away with a 90-41 win at Connecticut. So that was pretty impressive. Elena Della Don returned for her team. 13 points and 6 boards. Christy Tolliver at 20 and 10. 
and Emma Messerman off the bench, 21 with six boards. Meanwhile, for Connecticut, Alyssa Thomas had 13 with nine assists and eight boards, so she almost had a triple double. And Jaquel Jones had a nine with nine boards. She wasn't very good. Then Bria Holmes off the bench had 15 for the Sun. And um, Washington is a win away from winning their championship. And game four is tomorrow night, which we'll pick on tomorrow's podcast. NHL will go throughout the weekend. We'll start with Friday. Flyers over to Blackhawks 4-3 to in the NHL Global Series. As the Flyers start off the season 1-0-0 under Elaine Vigneault, Chicago. 0-1-0. Oh, and oh. and uh, Travis Conner, he had two goals in that game. Maple Leafs over the Blue Jackets, 4-1. to one. The Maple Leafs go to 2-0-0. Oh, and oh. Columbus, 0-1-0. Oh, and oh. Jets over the Devils, 5-4 in a shootout. Jets came from mine from 4 nothing down. Give them credit. They are 1-1-0. One, one oh. New Jersey, 0-0-1. Oh, oh, Capitals over to Islanders 2 to 1. Close competitive game there on the island. Washington 2 0 and 0, Islanders 0 1 and 0. Golden Knights over the Sharks 5 to 1 for the second time in a 3-day span. Vegas 2 0 and 0, San Jose 0 2 and 0. And Saturday you had the Devils over the Sabres, seven to two. A really nice win for Buffalo. They're two zero and zero on the year. Devils zero one and one. Rangers over the Senators, four to one. Mika Zibanejad a hat trick against his former team, four points in total. Rangers two zero and zero. Ottawa zero two and zero. Panthers over the Lightning, four to three. Florida one and one. Tampa Bay. One and one, both of these teams obviously had the home and home, and the home team won each of them. Next up, the Hurricanes defeat the Capitals 3-2 to two in overtime. Same result as Game 7 from last year, so that's ironic. By the way, Astros raise on their way as uh, whoever just let off for Houston Looks like he grounded out to start the game against Charlie Morton. Carolina Hurricanes 2-0-0 and Washington is 2-0-1. Canadians over to Maple Leaf 6-5 in a shootout. An impressive win for Montreal going into Toronto and getting the two points. Although I had to take a shootout. Oh, or I'm sorry, 1-0-1 and Toronto is 2-0-1. Penguins over to Blue Jackets 7-2. A Good bounce back win for Pittsburgh after the bad loss to Buffalo, which only scored one. They're 1 1 0. Columbus is 0 2 0. Blues over the Stars 3 2. A good win for St. Louis, who is now 1 0 1. Dallas 0 2 0. Red Wings over the Predators 5 3. The Red Wings on the year are. 1-0-0, so that was their first game on Saturday, and the Nashville's 1-1, so a very bad loss for the Predators in their second game of the season. Bruins over the Coyotes, 1-0, so the Bruins are 2-0 to start the year, and Arizona, 0-2. Or I should say 2-0-0 and 0-2-0, if you're talking about hockey terms. Avalanche over the Wild, 4-2. The Avs are... 2 0 0. Minnesota's 0 2 0. So good start for Colorado. Flames over the Canucks 3 0. A solid win for Calgary, who is 1 1 0. Vancouver 0 2 0 with losses to Edmonton and Calgary in division. Oilers over the Kings 6 5. If you're the Oilers and you're trying to make the playoffs, these are games that you have to win over the dregs of. 
your conference and in your division. Not that Vancouver's a drag. That was a nice win in Vancouver. But you got to win games against the Ducks and the Kings if you want to leapfrog like the Winnipeg Jets or somebody like that to make the playoffs in the Western Conference. So Edmonton now is 2-0-0. And and LA 0-1-0. That was their first game on Saturday. And then the Ducks defeat the Sharks 3-1. So the Ducks get a nice home win. And San Jose, by the way, 0-3-0 to start the year. That's not good at all. Anaheim's 2-0-0 with wins over San Jose and Arizona in division. Yesterday, only three games. Hurricanes over the Lightning 4-3 in overtime. So that's back-to-back overtime wins for Carolina, who are now 3-0-0 to start the year. Tampa Bay 1-1-1. Red Wings over the Stars 4-3 and a Another win for the Red Wings, back-to-back. So they're 2-0-0 to start the year. Dallas 0-3-0. I don't know who's a bigger disappointment right now, San Jose or Dallas. If you ask me, I'd say, hmm, probably San Jose because they had a home game against Vegas, which in theory would be a bounce-back spot, and then you lose at Anaheim. I mean, the Stars losing at the Red Wings, that does feel kind of trappy. And then they lost at home against a good Bruins team. So that is something uh, quite interesting. And by the way, Jose Altuve just took his ex-teammate Charlie Morton deep to take a 1-0 lead over the Rays in the top of the first. And then the Islanders beat the Jets 4-1 to get their first win of the season. So they are 1-1-0 and Winnipeg is 1-2. And good thing for Winnipeg is that they got that Devils win because if they started 0-3, then talks about Paul Maurice would be really, really hot right now in terms of a hot seat. Two games on the slate tonight. I think they knew that the baseball playoffs would be on, so they lightened up their schedule. The Blues and the Maple Leafs, so at least the Blues and the Cardinals don't play at the same time if you're a St. Louis fan. And hopefully you're... Fired up because maybe the Cardinals get the win and uh, force a game five, so you'd be all giddy for the Blues. And then the Sabres and the Blue Jackets, so you get a good Eastern Conference game there, and then a good um, battle between two contenders in Toronto and St. Louis tonight as well. So, two good games on the hockey slate tonight for those that are not interested in watching baseball. The NBA preseason has really started to kick things into gear Friday night Pacers over to Kings 132 to 131 in overtime Nets over Franco 137 to 89 and Monday the 30th you had the Rockets defeat an overseas team called the Sharks 140 to 71 Saturday NBA preseason Pacers over to Kings 130 to 106 Lakers over to Warriors 123 101 and some of these games by the way are being played on neutral sites some of them are playing in the home arenas Magic killed the Spurs 125-89, and the Jazz defeat the Aladai 36ers 133-81. Sunday, the Grizzlies defeat Maccabi Haifa 123-88. John Morant had a nice debut. Celtics over the Hornets 107-106, and the Clippers defeated that same Sharks team that the Rockets defeated 127-87. Tonight's preseason games, you have... San Lorenzo at the Cavaliers, the Knicks at the Wizards, the Magic at the Pistons, Pelicans at the Hawks, 7.30 on NBA TV. So you have Zion Williamson against all those players from the Hawks that they have in store, like the John Collinses and the Trey Young. So it's really Trey Young versus Zion in that game. That's like kind of the headlining thing. Although John Collins is a very good player of his own right, although all the buzz surrounds Trey Young. And then you have the Bucks at the Bulls tonight as well in the preseason. The Redskins had fired Jay Gruden this morning after an 0-5 start. This was bound to happen. A lot of people thought it would happen a week ago after the Giants game, but they waited to do it after the Patriots game. I think a lot of people were expecting this news today, especially after they didn't do it last week. So here we are. Bill Callahan, the offensive coordinator, is now the intern coach, and their wish list 
for the owner, Dan Snyder, is Mike Tomlin, who the Steelers probably won't be getting rid of anytime soon. Todd Bowles, who was a failure with the Jets, who is the defensive coordinator for Bruce Arians in Tampa, and Chiefs offensive coordinator Eric Bienmi, who is getting a lot of buzz because of the development of Patrick Mahomes. But be weary of the coordinators, and you can really uh, fall for them, and they really come back to haunt you. Not all of them work out, and you're seeing that all around the league. Like the Giants, for example, like Ben McAdoo was Aaron Rodgers' quarterback's coach, and then Tom Coughlin hired him to be an offensive coordinator. He was a good offensive coordinator, and then he ended up as the coach in waiting, and then he replaced Coughlin and was terrible, although they made the playoffs that first year. And then you hire Pat Shermer, who turned Case Keenum into a good quarterback for a year, but it turns out that that has not been a good hire so far as Shermer went 6-10, and 10, or I'm sorry, 5-11 and 11 his first year, now he's 2-3 and three this year. So right now 7 and. 14 as the New York football Giants head coach. So not everything works out once you hire a coordinator. And you're seeing it right now at Freddie Kitchens as they are a disappointing 2-2. Two and two. And so that could be another coordinator that doesn't pan out as a head coach. So like I'm saying, you see this everywhere in the NFL. So be weary if you're the Redskins and get somebody with experience. I mean, Todd Bowles, like I said, was a failure. If you can get Mike Tomlin, I think that'd be a good hire. Maybe a change of scenery can do him wonders for the um for the Redskins, but you never know with that. Guess the lines, week seven college football. We're finally here. Some of these lines probably have changed since I last looked, but I'm gonna have them as I have them right now. We'll start with Wednesday night. Yes, we have a Wednesday night game this week. Appalachian State at Louisiana. I had App State giving one to Louisiana, and Louisiana is actually favored by two and a half. So a lot of buzz generating around the Raging Cajuns right now as Alex Bregman just reached base for the Astros, now up is Jordan Alvarez. So, um... They're doing some uh, hometown cooking here in the first inning, it looks like, off of their ex-teammate Charlie Morton, who they all know. So it makes sense for uh, the Astros to um, have success against him, I guess. Friday, or I'm sorry, Thursday night, Syracuse at NC State. I have NC State by three. It's three and a half. Yul Monroe at Texas State. I have Monroe by nine. It's Monroe by three. I think that's off. Friday night, number 20, Virginia at Miami. I have Virginia by seven and a half. It's Miami by two. What are they thinking? Like, come on. Miami couldn't even beat Virginia Tech, who lost 45-10 to their Duke a few weeks ago. Like, come on. Colorado State at New Mexico. I have New Mexico favored by three at home. And it's actually Colorado State by four. So they're very down on New Mexico. Colorado, number 13, Oregon. Oregon, I have laying 10 and a half. It's 21. That is very, very high. I think Oregon's overvalued yet again. Saturday, South Carolina, number 3, Georgia. I have Georgia by 27 and a half. It's 25. Number 6, Oklahoma versus Texas from the Cotton Bowl. Oklahoma by 10 and a half. It's 10, so one point off. Number 16, Michigan at Illinois. I have Michigan by 21. And Michigan is giving 19, so two points off. Number 23, Memphis at Temple. I have Memphis by 3.5. It's 4, so half point off. Maryland at Purdue. I have Maryland by 2.5. It's 5.5. Mississippi State at Tennessee. I have Mississippi State by 3. It's 6.5. Rutgers at Indiana, I have Indiana by 18 and a half. It's 25 and a half. Miami of Ohio at Western Michigan, I have Western by 13 and a half. It's 12. 
Toledo, Bowling Green, I have Toledo by 12 and a half. It's 24 and a half. Georgia Tech at Duke at Duke by 16 and a half. It's 17 and a half. One point off. Ball State at Eastern Michigan. I have Eastern by 6 and a half. Ball State by 1. The wrong team's favored there. Old Dominion at Marshall. I have Marshall by 15 and a half. It's 14. New Mexico State at Central Michigan. I have Central by 7. Central by 11 and a half. Number 1, Alabama. At Texas A&M, who's now number 24. And by the way, the Rays couldn't get an out there. Alex Bregman advances the third as Jordan Alvarez advances the second on the error by Jai Man Choi. Number one, Alabama at number 24, Texas A&M. How in the world is Texas A&M ranked? I don't know. Alabama's favored by 16 and a half. They're favored by 18 and a half. Florida State at number two, Clemson. I have Clemson by 27 and a half. It's 26. Michigan State at number 8, Wisconsin. I have Wisconsin by 8.5. It's 10. Wazoo at number 18, Arizona State. I have it as a pick 'em. Arizona State's giving 2.5. Number 25, Cincinnati at Houston. I have Cincy by 3. It's Cincy by 5.5. BYU at South Florida. I have BYU by 10.5. BYU's favored by 4. Kent State at Akron. I have Akron by 3. Kent's favored by 11. Yikes. Northern Illinois at Ohio, Ohio by 5.5, Ohio State by 6.5. UConn at Tulane, I have Tulane by 25.5, it's Tulane by 35. Texas Tech at number 22, Baylor at Baylor by 17, Baylor's favored by 9. San Jose State at Nevada, I have Nevada by 12.5, Nevada by 3. So people are starting to believe in San Jose State a little bit. UNL v at Vanderbilt, I have Vanderbilt by 9, Vandy by 15.5. Iowa State at West Virginia. I have Iowa State by 7. It's Iowa State by 9.5. Rhode Island at Virginia Tech. I have Virginia Tech by 27 points against the FCS opponent. And I don't think they have a line posted for that yet. I'll have to check. And I believe Virginia Tech should be favored in this game over Rhode Island. It says a pick'em, but I really don't believe it's a pick'em. I think it's a uh, bit would be bigger than that. Middle Tennessee at FAU. FAU's laying eight and a half. Eleven and a half is the actual line. Georgia State at Coastal Carolina. I have Georgia State giving a point and a half. It's actually Coastal by six and a half, so I was way off there. UAB at UTSA. I have UAB by eight and a half. It's UAB by nine. Army at Western Kentucky. I have Army by nine and a half. It's Army by five and a half. UMass at Louisiana Tech, L Tech 33 and a half. And it's L Tech by 31. North Texas at Southern Miss. I have North Texas giving two and a half. It's Southern Miss giving five and a half. Fresno at Air Force. I have Fresno by 11 and a half. Air Force is giving four. Yikes. So they must be down on uh, Fresno. Ole Miss at Mizzou. I have Mizzou by 11.5. Mizzou is giving 8.5. Charlotte at FIU. I have FIU by 6. It's FIU by 6.5. USC at number 9, Notre Dame. I have Notre Dame by 18.5. Notre Dame is giving 11. Number 10, Penn State. At number 17, Iowa. I have Penn State by 4.5. It's Penn State by 3. Louisville at number 19, Wake Forest. I have Wake laying 8.5. It's 6.5. Nebraska at Minnesota. I have it as a pick em. Minnesota by 7. Arkansas, Kentucky. I have Kentucky by 12.5. It's Kentucky by 7. Navy at Tulsa. I have Navy minus 2.5. And and it's Tulsa by 1. And by the way, Charlie Morton works out of trouble. 31 pitches in that first inning. That does not bowl well for him. Although the Rays bullpen is somewhat decent. Number 7, Florida. At number 5, LSU. I have LSU by 10.5. It's 13 and a half. Number 15, Utah at Oregon State. I have Utah by 18 and a half. It's 14. Hawaii at number 14, Boise. I have Boise by 24 and a half. It's 13. Wyoming at San Diego State. I have San Diego State by 7 and a half. It's 4 and a half. And Washington at Arizona. I have Washington by 7 and a half. It's 7. So a lot of these guesses, I was either a half point off or a full point off or a point and a half off or whatever. Best bet of the day, 
brought to you by DraftKings. I just did a money line parlay of the four teams I like in baseball to win the Rays, the Cardinals, the Dodgers, and the Twins. Eighteen fifty three payout of thirty nine dollars and seven cents. I wagered only thirty five cents on it. That's it for the podcast today. I'll be back tomorrow recapping the baseball games, Monday Night Football. I'll have guest lines week six NFL for you tomorrow. NHL or yeah, WNBA game four. I'm also gonna have NBA as well. May have some guests on this week. I'll try to get on Jeff Maglachetti to talk WNBA Finals and football and hockey and the baseball playoffs with me. Maybe I'll finally get Derek on this week. And then Nick Costos possibly at the end of the week to talk about the uh, league championship series, prices, NBA over-unders, college basketball futures, college football futures, and obviously our best picks for the NFL and college football and maybe some futures in those sports as well. Hope you guys have a great day, everybody.